Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. Recently, I received an email from the BenQ Corporation asking me if I'd be interested in reviewing their e-reading light and its suitability as a hobby task light. While I was familiar with the BenQ brand as a manufacturer of computer monitors and displays, I wasn't aware of their LED lights. Before saying yes, I looked over their online information about the light to see if it was even something that I'd consider. My main concern about any light that I work under is that it has a spectrum as close as possible to actual daylight. This means a color rendering index, or CRI, of at least 90 or better. The specs on the e-light promise an impressive CRI greater than 95. That made the light extremely interesting, and I accepted their offer. So before getting into the actual review, I need to disclose that BenQ did provide the light that I'll be reviewing, but I have no association or commitments with BenQ. I don't own or use any of their other products, and other than the light, I receive no other consideration for this review. No matter what your modeling accommodations are, the one constant necessity is good lighting over your working space. In my hobby as a model maker and my profession as a dentist, good quality light over my work area is essential. If you can't see it, you can't create it. There are several ingredients that are important to consider when selecting a good task light. Color accuracy of the light source, size of the illuminated area, and how well it fits the workspace. The top of my list has always been color accuracy. Typically, you'll see the color of a light listed as a temperature, but for the most part, this value alone is meaningless. That's why two different light sources listed as, say, 5500 Kelvin will exhibit different color. This is because the temperature value by itself doesn't define the exact amounts of the different wavelengths of light that make up that 5500K. A common specification for how well an artificial light source mimics daylight is the Color Rendering Index, or CRI. If you're interested in accurate color rendition, look for a value of at least 90. And I'm always skeptical about any generic labels like Full Spectrum. I want to see the number. Second, any light should provide enough light to cover a sufficient size of your work area so that the lighting in your field of vision is even. It's too hard on your eyes to work in a field with only a bright central portion. That's the main reason the typical high-intensity style lamp works fine over a grinder where the field's very small, but it isn't suitable over an entire modeling workspace. Third, the mechanics supporting the light should be stable, allow for proper positioning of the light, and be as much out of the way, especially if your work area is limited. So with those considerations in mind, how does the e-light stack up? When you first look at the e-light, you can't help but notice the unconventional shape of the light itself. The light source is a dual-color LED strip rated at a CRI of 95. Power to the light is supplied through a 12-volt adapter that plugs into an industrial-strength braided cord. The light's supported by an extremely well-done metal arm that's in keeping with the style of the light. The head of the light's attached to the arm with a ball joint, and all the joints are snug and they stay put. The light's supplied with a very heavy base that's more than enough to keep the light stable no matter where you position the arm. BenQ also offers an optional bench clamp, and I have to say the clamp's a lot stouter than what you typically see. The lamp arm mounts over a quarter inch post, and this makes it very easy to mount the light in any sort of customer surface installation, because all you need is a quarter inch hole and a short length of rod. If you want to thread the cord through a bench top, you only need a half inch hole because you only need to accommodate the power adapter plug rather than a conventional AC plug. The base of the arm occupies much less space than a conventional task light. The curve shape of the light allows it to deliver an even amount of light over a fairly broad area with better fall off towards the darker outside edges. The narrow width of the light lets you get it down below the level of your eyes and over your work, while still keeping it out of the way of your head. 
Control for the light is equally unique. To turn the light on and off, you simply touch the control ring. The brightness and color of the light is handled in two ways. In the automatic mode, Holding the ring for two seconds switches between two presets, the book reading mode of 5700K and the digital reading mode of 4000K. The mode is indicated by a light at the base of the ring. Brightness in the automatic mode is controlled by a sensor that measures the ambient light. The brightness and color of the light can also be controlled manually with the knob on the top. When you first turn the knob, you adjust the brightness. If you push in, you switch to the color adjustment, which takes you through a range of 2700 to 5700K. To exit the manual mode, simply hold the ring for two seconds. All in all, I'm extremely impressed with this light. I think the ability to fine tune the color temp, the wide pattern, the unobtrusive scale of the design and the simple mounting style makes it a real asset over any hobby bench or lab bench. I want to sincerely thank Ben Q for the opportunity to review it. And if you want to know more about the e-reading light, I've put a link to the complete user manual in the description below. So long for now and I'll see you next time.